I would like to talk about somebody else, not an Alabama native, but someone else that was involved in the mission whose role we do know. Now, it is the uh, individual who chased al-Baghdadi, leading the charge into that dead-end tunnel where he wound up cowardly uh, killing himself by means of suicide and taking his children with him. We know the soldier that was actually in charge of doing that, President Trump declassified his identity and picture the other night, and I would like to show you his, oh, excuse me, her picture. So if we can bring that up. There we go. So uh, it was actually a dog. And I just thought this was really cool. Now, you know I love dogs. I adore dogs. And this is the best dog. As much as I love my dog, right now, it, this is the dog of the hour. Who's a good terrorist killer? You are, yes. So uh, this dog is named Conan. Now, we originally did not know the dog's name, but that has been declassified as well. Originally, we just got the picture of the dog that chased al-Baghdadi into the cave. Now we have the dog's name, Conan, but actually it is a girl that was declassified as well. So uh, I really hope they fed her bacon right before the operation. <laughs> Like, I, I know that there would be no way to do this because it was a secret mission and they kind of ambushed him, but I would really like for al-Baghdadi or anybody that got bit by this dog to know that the dog had just eaten some kind of pork right beforehand. That just would be the cherry on top of the sundae, uh, knowing all this, because, of, of course, they see pigs as an unclean animal. And uh, we do know the dog's name now. Like I said, it was is Conan, but we didn't know it initially. And this set off on the social media, the interwebs, if you will, a series of people trying to figure out what the dog's name might be. And so I tried my hand at this. These were my top guesses as to what the dog's name might be. So mine was, uh, number one, Payback. Thought that was appropriate. Number two, Crypto. For those of you who don't know Superman comics, that's Superman's dog's name. So Super Dog, Crypto. Uh, number three, Cerberus, the dog that guards the underworld in Greek mythology. Number four, kind of goes back to my bacon comment, pig. I would just love for a bunch of Muslim terrorists uh, to be like, well, how did they die? Well, they were eaten by a pig. <laughs> just be the most disgraceful <laughs> way to go. Can we train attack pigs? Is that a thing? Because I would totally get on board with that. You know I'm a fiscal conservative. I don't like spending a lot of money. I am perfectly okay with spending a few million dollars on a method to train attack pigs to go after Muslim terrorists. <laughs> They're smart animals, and they can be aggressive, and they can actually do some damage with their teeth. But uh, if we could pull that off, I would totally be in favor of that. I would In fact, I would love to learn how to train an attack pig. That would just be the coolest thing ever. I would love to put that on a resume. And then finally... My last guess of what the dog's name may be, Towelhead Eater. I just think that's incredibly appropriate. <laughs> uh, Towelhead Eater, I, that's what I would name the dog, I think, if, if I were in charge of naming the dog. But in the wake of all this and all the, um, you know, everybody left, right, whatever, talking about the dog and, and the heroism of the dog, and, and they just kind of fell in love with this animal, and, and should, I did too. Uh, the Babylon Bee decided to put out, and I got to tell you guys, the Babylon Bee has quickly become one of my favorite websites. It's a satire news site, so they do fake news, but they do it knowing that it's fake news and, and trying to make it funny. So the Babylon Bee puts this out earlier. I want you to see this headline, which was just hysterical, uh, about the dog. CNN uncovers evidence hero dog sniffed dozens of butts back in college. <laughs> So you can see there the fake CNN headline, uh, exclusive so-called hero dog sniff numerous butts during college parties. <laughs> you know, I, I do love the joke. And, and the great thing about satire, and I've said this for a long time, I wish I were funnier. I really do. Uh, I wish that I were more along the lines of, of Steven Crowder, one of those guys that are just really good at doing parody and news uh, or, you know, Babylon Bee. But one of the things that I do love about satire is that 
sometimes because it's trying to be funny, it unveils a meaningful truth underlying it. And really, it's very obvious that what they're pulling this from was the Brett Kavanaugh situation or the way that CNN and the liberal media tries to destroy every single person, even if they're trying to do a good thing. We remember the Covington kids uh, with the, the Native American. You remember that whole debacle. And more recently, one of the things that I thought about was the guy on ESPN who had the the sign with, I think it was, was it Budweiser or Bud Light, one of the beer companies, and wound up raising over a million dollars to help sick kids. And CNN went through his old tweets or whatever, and Anheuser-Busch wound up cutting ties with him because he had tweeted racist things like, I don't know, three or four years ago, which he was an idiot high school kid. I mean, I don't know that it makes a lot of sense to do that, but here's the thing. Just because I like something that a person did doesn't mean that I am automatically endorsing every action or every word that they have ever said or ever done. That's not how this works. I can like something that somebody did and applaud them and still not like every single thing in their past and not want to go digging through their past to make sure that they're pure enough. I do think it's really funny that the left is constantly berating the right and saying that they're like old school marms or they're sticks in the mud when it comes to especially the evangelical Christian right. And yet, when it comes to their ideology, they're worse about it than any Christian I've ever come across. I mean, we can't even say that someone did a good thing by raising money for sick children because he said something racist a while back. Well, that's dumb. I don't necessarily agree with the racist thing that he said, but that doesn't mean I have to hate every single thing the man does from now to the end of his life. That's a ridiculous standard to hold. And same thing, like, if a dog takes down a terrorist, I don't care that he sniffed butts in college. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And here's the thing. You don't need to be dismissive about it. You don't ignore past wrongs or past offenses. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you do put it into context, and, and this is the difference in many ways, the modern left and the modern right. The right can look at actions of people and say, you know, there's some things I like, there's some things I don't, there's some nuance here, and I can condemn some actions by a person and also condone and applaud some actions by that same person. What the left has done is they've basically become Pharisees when it comes to this. No, that person said a racist thing t 25 years ago. He is unpure, unclean. You can never have that person in polite company. That You can never acknowledge that person ever did anything good with their life. They really have taken it to an insane religious level. And it's unhealthy and it's not good for them and it's not good for others. But this really is... Uh, unfortunately, where they found themselves, and this Babylon Bee article points that out perfectly, but ultimately, when it comes to this dog, dog is always going to be man's best friend, but right now, this dog is America's best friend, and so we salute General Howell and the other brave men of our military involved, and we also salute our canine soldiers as well. Thank you for the work that you do. You deserve a strip of bacon, and for this dog, definitely too. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus. But I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.